Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vandy Ezzel back in another uh, Sarah song overview. I hope you enjoyed. Don't like, comment, subscribe, and star, shall we? So this time we are covering uh, another new song. It's the one, it's the favorite one of the creator of this game. I'm not going to say his name, but he knows who he is. And that is Draftfear. So, Draftfear, it's basically the song full of dark wizards and demons born of the... Um, Hellfire, I guess is what we can call it. I mean, they're born from hell is what we should call it. And they're basically the embodiment of evil is what we can call it. Because I don't think we, there's another way to describe it the way I want to describe it. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. And I can show you why this song is good. And maybe y'all will see uh, uh, get an opinion on it too. So first up, our first card is our main creature in this song. And the ace creature of the guy who's in the anime, Shoji Yure, if I remember how to say his name correctly. And the favorite card of the person that made this song, obviously. And that would be Wizard of the Dark Arts. Tiresias, as he's used to call it, or Tyrus. It's one of the two. We don't know. I mean, I call it Tyrus because that's how it looks like it's spelled. But he calls it Tiresias because that's how he says it is. But I don't care. So anyways, he's a level two. He has a gift icon, as normal. He has 200 power. He has one damage as per usual. He's a demon wizard. So he's actually one of the strongest level twos, by the way, because normal level twos don't have 200 power. So I think he gets that obsession because he's the boss monster. So his flavor text being a simpleton like you doesn't understand the complexity of the dark odds. Fair enough. That, that That's an insult to everyone who's heard that so far. I think that's an insult to me because I don't even understand this. And I'm the one that made half its support cards. So... Yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and get on to his powerful skill. So first up, by paying one, when this creature enters the field, you can put two spell cards from your drop zone into the banner zone. So now, I haven't given this song a proper introduction, but basically, the point of the song is actually different from a lot of other things, where a lot of other songs focus on creature spamming, obviously, and attacking, and maybe focus on different, different types of support cards. But Tyrus over here, in his song, focused on actually relying on spells to do the work, mainly spells in the banish zone. If you don't know what the banish zone is in this game, it's basically a place beyond the drop zone. You can't do anything from there, like, unless you're playing this song in particular. So, the banish zone being the place where all cards go after they hit the drop zone. I mean, not after they hit the drop zone. If you put a card, remove the game further beyond the drop zone, it's going to the banish zone. So, the fact that he can put two spells in the banish zone is really good, but you may be wondering, why is that good, even though you want to be able to use a lot of spells a lot, um, remotely, and that's because his second ability, the main point of the song, is pay one during your main phase, enter the state, black magic, where if you play, it, where if you pay the cost, you can play a spell or a rune from your banner zone. So, say for example, and I'm going to use some Arizon cards here because I don't want to spoil what's in draft here. Um, Say, for example, you had a Dragon Wings in your drop zone. You can pay one when you summon Tyrus, banish that Dragon Wings. Then you can use a Tyrus skill to pay one, enter the state of Black Magic. You only have to do it once and you're in that state for the whole turn. And activate that spell from your banner zone by paying its cost. But since Dragon Wings cost is just discard one, just discard one, and you get to use its ability. And then after you use that spell, you place it right into the drop zone. So all around really nice. It basically makes your banish zone your second hand and gives all your spells second use. So you can cast your spell from your hand once, for the turn, obviously. Then you call Tyrus, use his ability, put that spell into Banish Zone, pay one, enter the state of black magic for the turn, and then use that spell again if it's not a once per turn. All around, he's really good because, like I said, uh, he allows your Banish Zone to be your second hand. You get basically a second use of all of your spells, and you can overwhelm your opponent with tricky combo play and with the versatile army of spells, which you do have in this song you kind of have really no disadvantages outside of your own self. So all around Tyrus is good. He's an amazing card. Definitely very, uh, I guess, skill use is what we can call him. I put air quotes on that statement. So four of, for obvious reasons, mainly because he's the ace. Weirdly enough, you don't use his gift check that often unless you have actual room to pay for him. Then we have our next card. So this card's the other important card in the song because if you don't hit Tyrus, you're gonna need something to keep you alive till you see him, which is Dark Demon Rider. So Dark Demon Rider, he's a level one with 50 power and one damage as per usual, okay? Mm, interesting that he's lower power than most level ones outside of safeguards. But anyways, the reason that he's like that is because this creature gets 50 power for each other copy of himself on your board, which means if you have three other copies, all of them have 200 power. So he's on even terms with Tyrus and is one of the strongest level ones in the game, simply because of that number. That's dangerous to your opponent because not only does that mean you can ram them down with four separate creatures, all of at least 200 power, but not only can you do that, 
You can also use them to defend yourself because only level 3s and stuff like Tyrus will actually be able to hit over them, meaning you can just defend yourself until you see Boy over here, and then when you finally draw into him, you summon him to that last open creature zone, and then you start taking them down with the spells you've uh, managed to keep up in either in your banish zone or your drop zone or in your hand. So all around that's really good, but you may be wondering how are you going to consistently get another Dark Demon right on the board, and his ability, his other ability to help deal with that is pay 1, search a song for a copy of him, add it to hand, and shuffle your song, and banish the top two cards of your song. So, you could just get to remove the top two cards of your song into the ban zone, which is really nice because that could possibly mean you could see a spell from it, meaning you have already set up for Tyrus going into this turn, and not only that, you get another Dark Demon Rider, and since he's not a once per turn, you can use him again and again, and that means you can just get the other three into your hand almost immediately if you happen to have three pay. It's called two of them, unless you called the one that you already have on your board last turn, then call three of them. All of them get at least 50 power for each of them, and not to mention you're just going to keep banishing cards for Tyrus. So all around, he's really nice. He gets support for Tyrus as he can possibly put spells in the banish zone. He gets a lot of numbers out, meaning that he can act as a stall card and a big beat stick until your main guy comes out. All around, he's a really nice level one. I like him. The only downside is him being a demon knight, where a lot of this songs, or not all of this songs, particular support uh, is restricted to, de to demon knights or demon wizards. But like, he's not a target for a lot of skills because he's a demon knight. Either way, he's a really nice card and he's just a really good thing you want to have. So obviously, you run him out of four of. Then we have our safeguard, Young Dark Witch Choco. So, standard Demon Wizard, uh, crit, uh, damage of 150 power, safeguard, discard the card from your hand, stop one of, stop an attack from an opposing creature. So, you know, in case you don't see Tyrus, you just want to stockpile these in hand, so when your opponent starts swinging for big numbers, you can easily block them down without having to waste a lot of hand cards to do so, especially because in this song, you do not have that many creatures to use to defend yourself with. And what I mean by that, all the creatures in this song are to four of. And there's only four of them, so you only have 16 creatures. This is one of them. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Choco is one of your best defenders. Like, every creature in the song has its own purpose and is very important. This one obviously being the stand-in defender until you get this boy, then obviously you call him to the board and win the game after that. Choco comes in as the main defense because it prevents you from being killed by very powerful attacks. Ahem, ahem, ahem. I'm looking at you, 1,100 power, Revan. You know what you did. So Choco's really helpful with that. Um, it's just a standard nullify, so obviously there's nothing much more to say about it, but it's a good card, so four of. And then our last creature being Dark Sage Sharon. So she's one of the best level ones just because like she has a free skill, meaning you can place her on the first turn and her ability goes off regardless if you have pay or not. So that's really good to begin with. So her stats are level one, uh, 50 power, one damage, demon wizard, cool, so it can be targeted by certain cards. And when she enters the field, you can banish the top three cards of your song. So that's really good. Yes, it is a mandatory banish top three, so you could deck out out of this, which is the worst scenario. I remember I used this during the match against um, Hero vs. Shoji, because I was also Shoji when I was playing. I wasn't the one voice acting him, but I was the one playing in the match. And, whoo, that was a horrible decision playing that Sharon, considering it literally almost decked me out, and I'm pretty sure that's the reason I lost. So, yeah, all around, she's a good card, because she can get you three cards into the banner zone for free, meaning you're able to keep up your spell spamming and uh, pay costs for stuff like Tyrus and your other spells. But the downside is she decks you out almost quicker, so there's always that to consider. But all around, she's a really nice card to play during the first turn. She's a really good card for support, and I feel like that's enough reason to run her, even though she could be the reason you lose in the end because of all the constant banishing. My only note is don't play through them in a turn because banishing top nine, while it sounds fun, remember, that's nine cards outside of your song almost in the first turn. So uh, four of Sharon, she's nice. She's our last creature. She has very little power, but she can be useful in her own right. So four of. And now on to our first spell. We have four copies of Dread Return. So, by playing this spell, you can pay one and choose one of your demon wizards, so basically everyone in the song that isn't Dark Demon Knight, and give him and give them plus 50 power for the turn. So you can give it to Sharon to make her the standard stats of a level one. You can give it to Choco to make her the standard stats of a level one. You can't give it to Ryder, but you can give it to Tyrus and make him the stats of most level threes, so you can actually be past them. But anyways, uh, Dread Return. Additionally, if it was played during Black Magic, however outside of that 50 power, you'll be able to return all creatures lower level than the chosen to the uh, than the chosen creature to the hand. So you don't have to play it from the banish zone during black magic, you just have to play it during the state of black magic when you use Tyrus. And if you do, it's at, while also giving that 50 power, you can also return everything with a lower level to hand, which means if you give it to Tyrus, every level one returns to the hand. 
So that's good. And it returns your own level ones too, which means you can use it to return Sharon to your hand and then call her back and then use her skill again. So after the Knights, it allows for combos to go up. And not only that, say for example, your opponent rushed you down with a bunch of level ones because level ones are the ones you can summon three copies of in a turn. And you were, um, while you were trying to set up for Tyrus, when you get to Tyrus out and then you play Dread Return, you can return all those level ones to their hand. And yeah, well, they just got a bunch of shield back into their hand. They lost a lot of stuff that prevented you from attacking them directly. And now they have to reset that stuff up. And if they can't set it up fast enough, you've essentially won because they uh, went out too early swinging full strength. So around Dread Return's really nice. It can um, mess up your opponent's plays a lot because it can disrupt their field. It can give 50 power to your Demon Wizards, which are notoriously weak. So that's a good thing. It's just a good card so far of. Then we have Shadow Blades, a card I have an active grudge against because every time I play against Draft Fear and I call my ace creature, the person I'm playing against happens to have this in hand. I'm starting to think this is rigged against me because I remember one time it was top decked and then it was immediately used against me. I hate this thing. So anyways, um, by paying two for Shadow Blades, you can destroy any creature on the field. So it can be your own, it can be your opponent's. So it's just a good card for that reason alone, because it can disrupt your opponent's board. Like you can get rid of something like Revan, for example, while you have Tyrus on the board, because obviously you don't want to swing with Tyrus into Revan because they're even powered. And if they do decide to take it, you're losing a lot more than they did because Tyrus is the reason you can play half your cards and is the main purpose of your song. Revan, he's just a big beat stick. So in the case where both of them destroy each other, you've lost way more than they lost because they can kind of replace Revan easily. You, on the other hand, can't really replace Tyrese that easily, especially because you only have 16 creatures and they have, I think, at least 20. So yeah, you're not really getting an advantage out of that. But anyways, Shadow Blade's really nice because it can destroy a card without having to do battle. So something big like that would go down in one hit. But then additionally, if you used it during Black Magic, just like Dread Return has another ability of used during Black Magic, you can destroy an additional creature. Again, that creature can be on either side of the board, but thanks to that, that means if you use it during Black Magic, you can destroy two creatures at once, which means Tyrus over here, just by using his ability and paying one, you can pay two and then destroy two more creatures. And then Tyrus can swing into someone. So that's three creatures down in one turn from the combination of one spell and one attack. That's really good. It wipes out the opponent's board. Or if they have three level ones, you can go Tyrus, Dread Return, bounce the three level ones, Shadow Blades, kill the other two creatures, and then you basically get free direct attack. Um, all around Shadow Blades is really good. Even if you don't use it during Black Magic, it's a really nice card to help slow your opponent's movements down until you get into Black Magic because you can still use its uh, first part of the ability just to destroy a standard creature. And not to mention the fact that you'll be able to banish it later when you draw into Tyresis eventually. So all around Shadow Blades is a really nice card. It either slows your opponent down or allows you to get... Um, Really get rid of really hard to kill creatures when you eventually get Tyrus out. So all around, really nice spell. I like it a lot. Definitely really good for, I guess, the aggressive. So four of. Oh, the defensive too. Then we have this one. Unfair deal. Okay. So this is the next card. I have a, I'm going to show the next card, by the way. Dark Exchange as well. So a little story about these. When I first came on as the quote-unquote uh, head card designer, again, on official title for Thera, these were not once per turns. And unfair deal was free. So I'm going to explain to you what these are, or like their skills, even though you can read them. And then I'll explain to you why I had to make these a once per turn. So first up, unfair deal. Pay one, what its current ability is. Pay one, your opponent heals one, and they discard two from their hand. It's a, you may only use unfair deal once per turn. Okay, that's good. You pay one, they drop two, but they do get to heal one to make up for the two shield cards they're most likely losing to use this card. Now, if they don't have damage, you can still use it. They just don't get to heal, but they have to discard. Okay, not the end of the world. Now, you may be thinking, how is that powerful? Here's how it's powerful. Not at once per turn, and it was free back in its original form. That means if you had four of these, you could use four of them, and your opponent has to drop eight cards. And if they have no damage, they are just discarding eight cards from their hand. You can see why I made this a once per turn and why I made it a pay one. It like the heal is good because it helps benefit you from discarding two. But um, no, this was not this was not a fair card. This was not a fair card at all. Like it, the name unfair deal definitely kept uh, true word to its statement. So yeah, all around it it was a good card. I had to nerf it into the ground so it wasn't broken and so Drafter didn't have like the most overwhelming advantage in terms of who had the best spells. So it's still four of in the song because you know they do get a heal out of it, but you're just making them discard two. So after you get Tyrus out, you can slowly take advantage of them because they overextended in the early game but it's a once per turn, so keep that in mind, so four of. Then we have Dark Exchange. 
So Dark Exchange original skill, when we were playing around with it, it was one of two things. It was take a damage, banish top two, then heal one, and, or it was a different skill as well, because we changed it to the banish after a while. But his first skill was heal one, draw two, I mean, sorry, take a damage, draw two, heal one. So maybe wondering, what was the point of that? Yeah, uh, taking the damage. It, the point of that taking the damage was, I guess, just to deck yourself out more. There was no minus to that outside of the fact you're losing three deck cards. That was, that was the only minus. You're losing three deck cards because you would immediately heal off the damage. And if you saw a trigger, you're just activating a trigger. So, yeah, Dark Exchange back in the OG was broken. Now, it doesn't have a pay cost. You're still taking a damage, but you banish the top two. You don't get draws. You're not healing that damage. So, it's also once per turn. But that's really good, though, because taking the damage, like I said before, activates possibilities for damage triggers. And it sets you up for future plays because since you're taking a damage, that means you have more pay, aka Counter Blast, to use during your turn, so obviously that's uh, helping for setup of that, of course, and not to mention it puts a spell in your drop zone for Tyrus, and it can possibly banish two spells off its own accord, so all around Dark Exchange is a really good spell, definitely not as good as it was before, but thankfully, I exist, and I had to prevent these from being broken. These are one of the things I will always remember whenever I play this game, and why I smite these cards in my living soul, because I had to face them multiple times, because the person that made the song kept fighting me with it. So all around Dark Exchange is really good, for set of purposes, whether it's just to take a damage to use pay or to get spells in banish zone, and you run out of four for that reason alone. Then we have our rune, which is Ritual of Darkness. So it's not the best rune, but it's not the worst rune either. So it's a free cost to place it on the board, and it has no pay, or um, yeah, it just has no pay cost. So when you enter the state of black magic to use this card, you draw one discard one. So one, it's a mandatory effect. So the second you enter black magic, you have to draw a discard. But upside is... It's a card that can swap hand cards and possibly use for combos. Because say, for example, you had a Tyrus in hand and you had a spell in hand, but you didn't have the pay to use it, but you wanted to get in the banish zone for next turn. When you enter Black Magic with maybe a Tyrus you already have on your board, you can use Ritual of Darkness to draw a card, discard that spell, and then you can call that Tyrus you have in your hand and then get that spell into banish zone if you have the pay to do so. So around, it's a nice card for those combo sakes. Uh, obviously, since it says enter the state of Black Magic, that doesn't mean you can play it during after you enter black magic and then discard you have to, it already has to be on the board when you enter black magic but that's still good uh since it can just get those swap hand cards it's the downside is it's, since it's a mandatory draw and discard that means you could deck yourself out with this quicker but all about it's helpful it gets you the possible resources you need to i guess play some combos for the following turn and it's a free rune and obviously you want to have a free rune just to get effects off since you can use it from black magic so around nice card can play from the band zone because it's a rune and it's just a four for that <clears throat> Then we move on to our last normal card in the song because it's not a trigger, and that would be Demonic Snare. So Demonic Snare is a really good trap. So first up, the reason why you have traps in this is because obviously you need traps. But the reason why there's only one trap is because this song focuses so much on spells and runes that if you were to um, play some traps in your song, you wouldn't get that much advantage out of it because you wouldn't be able to play them from Banjo like you could with your other skills for Tiresias. So obviously you don't want that many to too many traps on their song, but because this is a trial deck, obviously we have to give you some trap, and that'll be Demonic Snare. So Demonic Snare, by paying two, when your opponent's creature attacks, destroy the attacking creature. Cool. So it basically nullifies the attack unless they have a way to stop the destruction, then it doesn't nullify the attack and the attack will still continue. But Demonic Snare is really good in that sense because, say for example, they're swinging with Revan, 1,100 power, I will keep bringing this up, uh, into your Tiresias. Obviously you can't guard that unless you have Choker on your hand, but you can use Demonic Snare to stop the attack entirely and destroy Revan unless, again, they prevent him from being destroyed, but Arizon doesn't really have something like that yet, ahem, ahem, and basically just nullify the attack. So, R on Demonic Snare is good. It can destroy pesky big creatures, or can slow down your opponent while you haven't had Tyrese yet, and maybe they've gotten rid of your Demon Knights, so you obviously want to keep this thing in your hand, just in case, to slow down your opponent, because then that's the whole point of this song, or half of it anyways. Half the point of it is to slow the opponent down, so you can have time to get Tyrus, and then after you get Tyrus, the other half is made to kill your opponent because they overextended too much trying to kill you before that you got to it. So all around Demonic Snare is helpful for doing that. Help definitely helps slow the opponent down, especially because you have an excess of pay amount before you get to Tyrus, so four of. Then we have our triggers. So we have three damage triggers. Uh, standard 50 shield for damage triggers. I really like this art. I like the beam with, I think that's black fire, just black spirals in general. It's really cool. Um, standard damage trigger, you know, when you gift check or damage checker, you deal damage to the opponent. So that's nice. Uh, possibly can rack up their damage even quicker, so along with Shadow Blades and uh, uh, what's it called? I'm trying to remember its name. Uh, Dread Return. 
Then there's also two draw triggers with 100 shield. So obviously they have more shield, but the reason why you only have two of them, it could oppose to the three damage triggers, even though they have less shield, is because the draw triggers will deck you out faster. And we did end up trying it with three draw triggers. That was not a good idea. We decked out so much quicker with three draws. Somehow the difference of one draw made that a big of a difference obviously we only keep the three draws now i mean two draws now but the draw is still helpful in case you have it in your hand or to get hand cards and then when you get checker damage checker by the way and then obviously our last trigger is a heal at five copies so we have three damage five heals two draws of 150 shield heal trigger obviously when you give checker damage check regardless of what damage you and your opponent are at you get to heal a card so that's really nice uh brings your damage down slower Th this is the one song where it matters what you heal well not the one song there are two songs that that matters what you heal but this is the one main one song where it matters where you heal because um since you want to get spells into your drop zone, if you have any spells in damage zone, just place the spells into the drop zone. So, you know, you can uh, ban some of Tyrus later. Speaking of Tyrus, our last, I guess, it's not a new card. It's just the alternate art of Tyrus. We have the SP, who is uh, Wizard of the Dark Arts, Tyrus. Tyrus, yes. Uh, drawn by Belial, really cool guy. Um, he's the same as Act 1, he just has a different art. I really like this card, or at least I like this image. I like his staff. I like the blue little wisp fire in it. Unfortunately, I have to say I like the other one more, just because I like how it looks. Um, I'll go back to it after this, but, oh my god, the blue wisp looks cool. I like the, um, not the mountain, the, what's it called, uh, castle in the background. I like the purple cloak, it looks really cool. My main thing with it is the eye is beautiful like look at it that that's such wellly drawn and i love it so much and his flavor text being the darkness of black magic will swallow you whole of course it will because for the main character of the song shoji yurei to use it the he has to by the way shoji yurei is not the main character of the anime he's just the main character that uses the song um he obviously has to be an edgy wee wee boy because obviously darkness you have to be edgy to use the darkness so yeah that's pretty much it for the song. Uh, I hope you guys know I'm going to go all the way back to the old Tyrese's because I really like this one more. Look at him. L look at his beauty. I like the black whips too. I like the purpleness. I like all of it. So anyways, I'm going to here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, all around, this song is very interesting. It's not my favorite. I will cover my favorite next time, probably. But it, this one's not my favorite. But it is good, though. It's very consistent. It has a lot of, I guess, ways to stall out the game until you get to this boy. And not to mention, it's very deadly after you get to him. So I'm going to end here. hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like. Comment, subscribe, to the Discord, follow Twitch, and I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to check us out.